I'm Chris, you're watching Fragmental. Ashton over at Gent Sense tagged me to do a video which is four most important scents in my life. So, if you want to find out what they are, stay tuned to FM. Thanks for the tag Ashton, I really enjoyed seeing which your four fragrances are. If you guys are watching this video and you've not seen Ashton's, make sure you go to his channel and check out his four most important fragrances, or his Mount Fragmore as he called it. The four fragrances I've picked for this video aren't necessarily the four best fragrances in my collection, but they are four scents that really played an important role in my fragrance journey. And if it weren't for these scents, I probably wouldn't be sitting here talking to you right now. As we go through these scents, I'm going to explain a little bit of background as to why I've picked them as my four most important. All right, on to the first scent. This one is from Calvin Klein, and it's a fragrance that until recently, until Ashton tagged me in the video actually, I only just re-bought it, and when I re-bought it a couple of weeks ago, I hadn't smelt it for probably 25 years, so it had been a while. This was a fragrance that I was wearing before I was really into fragrances at all. This was probably part of a Christmas stocking or a Christmas present. I wasn't at a stage in my life where I was really thinking about wanting to wear fragrances. Obviously other people in my life were thinking that I should wear fragrances, which is why it was given to me as a gift. So at the time I wore it and I kind of went through the motions of wearing a fragrance at the time when I thought I should wear a fragrance. And then there's an extra little meaning attached to this one. So the fragrance from Calvin Klein I'm talking about is CK1. So I think at some point, most people have either smelled this or had this as part of their collection. It's a really affordable fragrance. I'm not sure if it was when it first came out. I can't remember the prices back then, but I just picked this 100ml bottle up for 20 pounds. And you know what? I was looking forward to smelling this again because I thought it was gonna transport me back to those early days where I was first wearing fragrances and it did straight away. But the thing that took me by surprise was I was thinking I would smell this and after all these expensive, complex niche fragrances I've smelled over the last few years, that I was going to revisit this and realize how uh, disappointing and how uh, designery and synthetic it was gonna be. It wasn't that at all. I smelled this and whether it was because it was attached to memories, I just thought it was beautiful, really uplifting. It's, it's fresh, it's a little bit woody, uh, it's very invigorating and it's got quite a lot of notes, quite a big note breakdown for a fragrance that is kind of a mass appealing designer scent. So it whisked me back to those days where I really couldn't have cared less whether I was wearing a fragrance or not, but I wore it anyway. It reminds me of my youth, it's really strongly connected to that. But even more so, I wore this fragrance during a very important part in my life, um, possibly the most important part of my career anyway so far. And I'm not sure if you know, but I do voiceover and acting work. I still do it as and when the work comes along. But about, I think it was 15, 16 years ago, I was very lucky and I got cast in one of the biggest TV shows here in England called Coronation Street. So I played a nurse called Carl Foster and Carl was a very confident, very assertive guy. I had some chats with my acting coach and he recommended I do a couple of things to help get me into character that I only did when I was playing that character. The first one was to buy some underwear that was different from any other underwear that, that I owned and I didn't really own any stylish underwear up to that point. So I bought some stylish underwear. It was Calvin Klein underwear. I think it was advertised by the footballer Freddie Lundberg at the time and I'd saw the posters. I thought, yes, that would be perfect. So I only put on those Calvin Kleins when I was playing that role, just to help me kind of feel like I was, I was that character. And the other thing I did was spray a scent. The scent I chose to wear to associate with that character that I just left in the dressing room at ITV Studios where we filmed at Coronation Street was this one. It was CK1. I knew I enjoyed it from 10 years previous, so I thought I would uh, wear this one again. And this reminds me of some really, really good and fun times in my life. We were doing some really great work on that show. I'm really proud of it. And this scent does take me back to that. So some really nice memory 
associations with this one. Join the Scent Geeks every Monday as we podcast about all things fragrance. You'll find us anywhere you can usually find a podcast. Links are in the description below this video. See you there, geeks. After CK1, the next fragrance I can remember playing a really big part in my life is Davidoff's Cool Water. Again, most people have had this in their collection. This one came about because I was on holiday in Cyprus, the Turkish part of Cyprus, with my family. And I remember my sister going crazy over the Turkish waiters in the restaurant because they were wearing this. And it was a restaurant on the complex where we were staying, so we got to know the waiters and, and got chatting to them, as you do when you're on holiday. And they were wearing this. And my sister was just saying, you know, whatever they're wearing, it's just amazing. So she asked them, she found out it was cool water. I'd never heard of it. As soon as I got home, of course, I got a bottle of cool water. I think at that point, I probably didn't buy it myself. It was probably a birthday or a Christmas present. So I had several bottles of this. This was just my go-to signature scent, probably from the ages of about 16 to 18. I just wore this nonstop, particularly for nights out. Again, after Ash and Tagme, I recently rebought this because I hadn't smelled it for probably 20 years. And I sprayed this and wow, I mean, even just smelling it now, it takes me back to the time in my life where I first started going out with my friends, we'd go out to bars and I smell this and it reminds me of the clothes I was wearing. It reminds me of the girls I was interested in. It reminds me of the bars that we went to, the drinks that we had in those bars. And I just remember feeling like, you know, I'm an adult now. And this was my signature scent at the time in my life that I, that I had that feeling. So a really strong association. I thought when I first smelled Creed's Green Irish Tweed, because it is said to be very similar to this one, I thought I was gonna have those memories attached to Green Irish Tweed as well, but I don't. Even though they are similar in certain ways, there are enough differences for me to really get that strong association with that time of my life with cool water, but not with Green Irish Tweed. As the name might suggest, I find Green Irish Tweed a little greener, and I think it's maybe the violet leaf. I, I really love the violet leaf in GIT. It's got this kind of thick uh, green aspect to it, which I don't think Cool Water has. This is a little sharper, not as rounded, probably not as good quality as Green Irish Tweed, but because of my associations, I've been wearing this again for the last week or so, and I've been really enjoying it, just because it takes me back to those carefree days when I was just having fun with my friends and not worrying about money, not worrying about anything else in life, just feeling free and grown up. So Cool Water was a big scent in my life. Now the next one was from the ages, this became a signature scent for me between the ages of about 18 and I'd say probably late 20s. So I wore this a lot. And again, this one was on the advice of my sister and she said, this is where, wherever I go and I smell this scent, it's amazing. I love this on a guy. And it was a little bit different because Cool Water had more of that classical, masculine, citrusy type of vibe going on with it. And this one was a much different composition. It was a more modern scent, a much sweeter scent. You probably all know what I'm gonna say. Again, I'm sure most of you have owned this one as well. But it's Jean-Paul Gaultier La Malle. I wore this all through my university years and beyond into my late 20s. I bought several bottles. If I ran out, I just went and bought another bottle. I didn't even explore other fragrances because I just thought everyone loves this one. I love this one. The bottle's kind of cool. Everyone recognized it wherever you went. You know, you went out in bars and people would say, oh, well, you're wearing uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. Nowadays, I don't necessarily want to smell like everybody else, but at the time I was wearing this, it was quite cool for people to stop you and ask you, were you wearing Jean-Paul Gaultier's La Malle? And it was a bit of a talking point, so it got you talking to people, so I enjoyed it for that. Obviously, going through university is a big time in anyone's life. The people that you meet, the friends that you make, you're kind of finishing university and then going off into the world and making big life decisions, but still having fun. You're still young enough to not have too many worries. 
So I associate Lamal with that time of my life. Again, it was a great time of my life. And I got to the point where, I think it was in my late 20s, I suddenly decided maybe I should start looking into other scents as well. Just because I've had so many bottles of this one, I should be a little bit more adventurous. So I left Lamal behind and that is probably the point where I started to get a little more inquisitive about fragrances and I started to go out shopping and smell different scents and then I started buying things like Invictus and uh, Ted Hermes. So Lamal is really important to me because it was the fragrance that really encouraged me to have a deeper appreciation for fragrances and it really propelled me into becoming more interested generally in fragrances and it was at that point that I started owning multiple fragrances for the first time. So by this point, I was quite familiar with designery type DNAs. I didn't really think there was much more than that out there. And I own several designer bottles. And then I was having a chat with a friend of mine who was really into Tom Ford. The only thing I knew about Tom Ford was that it was out of my price range, that it wasn't affordable. So I kind of listened to what he was saying, but I didn't act on anything because at that point I didn't think there was any point in it even smelling those Tom Ford fragrances. Must have been a couple of years down the line, I was in Faro Airport in Portugal and I thought, you know what, I'm going to see what the fuss is about. I'm going to see what Ben's talking about with this amazing fragrance and uh, make my own mind up about it. So, I went into the duty free, I had a spray of this one, Tom Ford's Oud Wood. <sighs> wow. This is the scent that really got me deep into fragrances. It was after smelling this, I took that deep dive into more designers and discovering niche fragrances. I did not know a fragrance could smell as opulent and as rich and as high quality as this. This was a step away from the designer scent that I was used to. So I got more interested in what other scents could I wear? What other scents could I add to my collection that are of this quality? So I started searching things on YouTube and I found uh, Stephen's channel, the Red Lessons YouTube channel. Started watching a lot of his videos. I was drawn in by how passionate this guy was about fragrances. I didn't know it was a thing that people went onto YouTube and talked about fragrances. And it was watching one of Stephen's videos that he mentioned a company called Perfume Parlor. And then I realized they were based in the UK. Very cheap company that do copies, clones of other fragrances. And Stephen was rating the quality of them and how close they were to the originals really highly. So I thought I would check them out myself. And the rest is history. I ordered hundreds of fragrances from Perfume Parlor in the smallest sizes that they did. So I could just discover all these new wonderful scents and really get my nose used to, to different notes and what's out there. That led to me starting my YouTube channel because I was looking for other videos about Perfume Parlor and there weren't really any videos out there. So I thought I'm gonna put some Perfume Parlor videos out there. So that's what got me started on my YouTube channel. It was Oud Wood that kind of tipped me over into that world of niche fragrances. And if it wasn't for Oud Wood, I would not have discovered everything that I have. I would not have these amazing fragrances here. I would not be talking to you right now. So at some point in my life, these four fragrances have all been very important in my journey. It's been a pleasure to share those stories with you. I need to tag a few people. I'm gonna keep it on this side of the pond. The first person I'm gonna tag is Mr. Smelly. Dan, let's see what your four most important fragrances are. I would also like to tag Claire on the excellent Smurfy Girly channel. And the third person I'd like to tag is Josephine, a good friend of mine. She's got an up and coming YouTube channel called Juste Rose. Josephine's been on one of my videos actually where we rated some or Josephine rated some Amouage fragrances. So I'll leave a link to all those channels down below. And Josephine, let's see what your four most important are. Thanks for watching everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video, something a little bit different. Remember, keep tuning in to FM and keep smelling good. Mm -hmm.